Hi everyone, I'm Jennifer Whitaker, and this is the next video in the series that I'm doing this month on understanding autism. And so today we're going to talk about the differences among a meltdown, a shutdown, and a tantrum, because these are not interchangeable and synonymous terms. And today I'm going to help you understand why. Meltdowns and shutdowns are often misconstrued as tantrums, and they often end in some sort of punishment or discipline. However, what causes a meltdown and what causes a shutdown is very different than what causes a tantrum. These are different processes that are happening inside the body for each instance. So when an autistic person's meltdown or shutdown is punished, disciplined, or otherwise treated as if it's a temper tantrum, we are quite possibly causing an imprint of trauma, which in the long run does more harm than good to the autistic person. So that's why this is such an important concept to understand. We don't want to accidentally traumatize people or be traumatized ourselves, whether it was an accidental incident or not. I'm Jennifer Whitaker, trauma specialist and autistic individual, and I want to welcome you back or welcome you to my channel. It's great to have you here. Please like, share, subscribe, and be sure to hit that bell so you don't miss any videos. And I hate for you to miss any videos, especially in this series on understanding autism. So hit that bell so you're notified. So let's get back into this. What is a meltdown? Meltdowns, ha meltdowns happen to autistic people, and they're an intense reaction to an overload of external sensory stimuli or a highly distressing situation in the environment. Meltdowns are the body's attempt to self-regulate. And according to st a study published on PubMed titled The Lived Experience of Meltdowns for Autistic Adults, during a meltdown, most autistics described feeling overwhelmed by information, senses, and social and emotional stress. They often felt extreme emotions such as anger, sadness, and fear, and had trouble with thinking and memory during the meltdown. Participants described feeling like they were not themselves during a meltdown. And yet, that is how they seem to let go or release the extreme emotions that they were experiencing. So what is a shutdown? Executive functioning shutdowns are cognitive processes regulated by the prefrontal cortex, right here behind your forehead, that facilitate the achievement of goals, problem solving, decision making, and action and behavior control. Those of us who are autistic and or ADHD have different neural wiring than holistic and neurotypical people do. Thus, our prefrontal cortexes function a little bit differently. Shutdowns can be caused by sensory or emotional overload, being rushed, feeling cornered, not having enough time to process, distress, pain, illness, or overwhelmed due to some societal demands that often lead us to mask in order to appear normal. Now, it is possible for neurotypical to pe people to experience executive dysfunction. However, that's usually caused by other things like certain mental health conditions, such as addictions, behavioral disorders, and mood disorders. It's probably not a lifelong condition attributed to neurological differences when a neurotypical person experiences executive dysfunction. So what is a tantrum? We commonly call these temper tantrums, and they happen to everyone not just autistic folks and not just neurotypical folks. The severity of a tantrum is determined by age, understanding the individual's window of tolerance, the intensity of the emotion, whether it's disappointment, anger, frustration, irritability, privilege, entitlement, and the person's level of emotional intelligence. Tantrums are driven by wants or needs not being met 
or perceived as not being met. Tantrums are a normal part of childhood, and in an ideal scenario, if a toddler is throwing a temper tantrum, both parents are securely attached and will help the tantrum-throwing child learn to navigate those emotional storms that they experience. However, parents who are not emotionally mature and they're not securely attached are likely to throw adult temper tantrums themselves. Physiologically, these are not the same thing as executive functioning shutdowns or autistic meltdowns. So some characteristics of a meltdown um, might look like, um, you know, causes might include overstimulation, usually due to a buildup of sensory input that becomes too much, a little like your computer acting up when too many apps are running in the background and it just needs a reboot so it can function well again. And meltdowns might look like hitting a limit it can feel as if the brain is short-circuiting. There is a self-reported temporary loss of control due to overwhelm. And that loss of control might include verbal expressing like crying, shouting, or screaming. It might include um, physical expressing like kinky, kicking, stomping, or lashing out. Or it might include self-harm behaviors like banging one's head against the wall, repeatedly hitting oneself in the arm or in the legs. So these look very much like fight or flight behaviors. And so that's what a meltdown can look like. Now, how can you help somebody when they're having a meltdown? First of all, don't ask us what we need or how you can help us in the moment. That only adds to the the excessive sensory input. And we are not able to answer you and to express with any clarity what we need in the moment. What we need is moral support, somebody to hold space, and when we're ready to talk, somebody to listen. We don't need judgment because your judgment of us in those moments only makes it more overwhelming and so much worse. Instead, show empathy and compassion because that's what helps us come back to ourselves more quickly. And ask us what we need when we're calm before the sensory input leads to a meltdown. So if you know that you have an autistic person in your life, especially if it's somebody close to you, have this discussion as a preventative measure. How can I support you before this happens? And what can I do when it's happening and after so you know not to ask in the moment? Now, what does a shutdown look like? Because a shutdown looks different. Now, causes of a shutdown include sensory or emotional overload, being pressured or hurried, feeling cornered or trapped, experiencing distress, pain, illness, or some unrealistic or arbitrary societal demand that will cause us to mask and ableize, which is how we pretend we're normal so neurotypical people won't shame, ostracize, and belittle us for our differences. It's exhausting to live like this. Now, a shutdown does look different. This is withdrawal, and this is wanting to be alone. We might you know, kind of suck into ourselves. A lot of times we have a monotone voice when we're in a shutdown or flat affect. We might be unresponsive altogether. Um, oftentimes inside ourselves, we feel really far away as if our body's here, but we're over there. Um, we might be unable to speak and sometimes unable to move altogether. Or if we are able to move, the movements might seem really robotic because our limbs feel really weighted and heavy. And we have difficulty thinking, difficulty forming thoughts. Um, it's a complete depletion of our energy. And to an onlooker, the behavior may seem unrecognizable as if it's a different person entirely. And sometimes that's how we feel during a shutdown. Now, ways to handle a shutdown. The best way is to lean into it and let it happen because fighting against a shutdown makes it so much worse. Sleep is a great way to handle a shutdown. Get some rest or get some sleep if you can. Be easy on yourself. If you experience that emotional hangover that seems to follow a shutdown, be easy with yourself. Watch a movie, play a favorite game, color, or do whatever that thing is that helps you recharge and come back to yourself. 
have a safe, sensory-friendly place to retreat to, and take time before re-engaging. Now, signs of a tantrum can include physical and emotional displays of anger, frustration, or displeasure. The Karen stereotype was created to call out adults who throw temper tantrums. And it's really not all that different from the temper tantrum a toddler might throw because there is emotional immaturity behind it. However, in children, tantrums are developmentally appropriate because it's part of the learning process. But in adulthood, it's a lot more concerning because sometimes adults use temper tantrums really consciously to achieve a desired goal. So there may be targeted manipulation behind a tantrum. So in a nutshell, And I admit that this is a bit oversimplified, you know, to summarize, meltdowns are related to the more hypersensitive nervous systems of autistic people. Shutdowns are generally related to differences in neurological wiring that affects our executive functioning. And tantrums are about emotional immaturity. So meltdowns can happen generally to autistic people. It's caused by sensory overload. It's the body's attempt to self-regulate and reboot. There's externalizing of the behaviors, you know, like displays of behavior uh, and it's protection from overstimulation. And we can help by understanding, supporting and preventing the autistic individual. A shutdown predominantly happens to autistic individuals, but for other reasons might happen to neurotypical people. But again, it's not the wiring. It's usually a mood disorder or something entirely different. Autistic shutdowns are caused by cognitive functioning differences, how we're wired. It's a brain's attempt to de-stress and calm down and reset. There's an internalizing and a withdrawing so we can recoup from the overwhelm. And again, you can help by understanding, supporting, and preventing. And tantrums can happen to anyone and everyone. Everyone has them at some point in their life. They're caused by unmitigated anger, frustration, and irritation. It's an attempt to get one's way. And there's emotional immaturity behind it. And sometimes outright manipulation and intimidation behind it. And what leads to help sometimes is consequences. The consequences Um, can lead to therapy, management, counseling, um, support groups, spiritual advising, or whatever works for you. But sometimes there has to be a consequence for somebody to start to mitigate their tantrums. So I hope you have found this information helpful. And if you have an autistic individual in your life that's close to you, or if you're autistic yourself, I just hope this gives you a little bit more information that can help you understand your loved ones or something you can share with your loved ones so they can understand you better. All right, everyone, please like, subscribe, share, and don't forget to hit that bell so you don't miss any videos. I'll see you next time. Happy self-discovery, everyone.